Hi everyone, I'd just like to share with you some thoughts uh, that I've had from reading John chapter 15. And in the first verse of John 15, Jesus says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. So this is one of the uh, I am statements of Jesus that are very simple statements like I am the door of the sheep, I am the light of the world, but incredibly deep and incredibly profound. So grapevines would have been familiar to the people Jesus was speaking to. Israel is a, a hot country and so they would have had vines and they, they would have drunk wine and it would have been a very, uh, very relevant picture for them to, to, to imagine and think about. If Jesus was speaking to us today, he might talk about a fruit tree like an apple tree or a, or a pear tree. But what does he mean by saying he's the true grapevine? I think he's, he's essentially saying that he's the only true source of life and of goodness. There are other sources, there are other vines, there are false vines, but Jesus is the true grapevine. So every other thing that we as humans can put our trust in are false grapevines. For example, other religions, philosophies, belief systems, whether that's belief in something or belief in ourselves or even not believing in everything. In anything. Those are all false grapevines. Jesus is the only true grapevine, the only true source of life. If we're attached to him, we're attached to the source of life and we have life and we can bear fruit. Jesus goes on to talk about two types of branches, branches that bear fruit and branches that don't bear fruit. And he says that the branches that do bear fruit, he prunes so that they may bear more fruit. When I was younger and lived in Portugal, uh, we lived in a house that had a vine in the garden. And so I'm familiar with what, what that vine looked like and, and how it grew and also how it was pruned. In case you don't know, vines have a, have a trunk, um, not normally very thick, probably about the size of my fingers like that. Um, and in Portugal, those trunks are vertical and then the stems uh, grow um, off the top of that trunk and they're raised up and they're supported normally by a frame. Sometimes they're under a driveway. In the height of summer, you've, you've normally got a mass of branches and stems and leaves and clusters of grapes underneath this, under this vine. And so it's a very flush and flourishing um, tree. But one thing that was particularly interesting was what, what they did when they pruned the vine. So they basically pruned it almost completely back to the trunk. Um, in the, this is in the early autumn. And the reason for that is that they, the, only, the only way it can produce fruit the next season is by producing new shoots, new branches, and, and therefore new fruit and new grapes. So they'd cut it right back to the trunk and just leave a few stems. And I think that's really what Jesus is um, getting at when he says that in order for us to bear fruit, there, there has to be pruning. There has to be removal of that old, those old branches in order for new, new growth and new fruit. Jesus' purpose for us is that we produce much fruit. So what's the fruit that Jesus is looking for? Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are all character qualities that Jesus wants uh, to develop in us. So let me ask you a question and ask me a question. Are we producing this kind of fruit, the fruit of the Spirit? Are we growing in this fruit? Are we, are we growing in love, in joy, and in peace? Are people around us seeing patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control? These are the things that God is looking for in us. These are the fruits of the Spirit that God wants to produce in us. Verse 5 of John 15 says, Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. So we have here a wonderful promise that if we remain in Jesus and he remains in us, we will bear much fruit. The secret to bearing fruit is remaining in him, staying connected to him, staying attached to him, the source of life, the source of, of that fruit. 
So I want to leave you with this encouragement to remain in him, to allow him to remain in you, and you will bear much fruit. Amen.